Welcome guys, this is Subifly and thanks for tuning in and uh, since my profession is actually as an in the IT uh, as an IT professional as an IT manager so uh, I thought I'd take this opportunity and use my YouTube channel to kind of help and illustrate and uh, setting up parallels in using or putting your VM into an external um, hard drive. So the first thing you want to make sure is you want to make sure that it's a USB 3.0. It does make a huge difference in regards of uh, disk speed. Uh, although you'll still be limited with the um, the type of external hard drive. So it's either a 5400 RPM or a 7200 RPM or a solid state drive. Again, even if you have a solid state drive, it would still be bottlenecked by the way that the system looks at uh, your connection in this rig in this point it'd be a USB 3.0 although it does a pretty good job that you would never even notice the performance uh, the second part is your computer must have enough memory or RAM to uh, accommodate now there's if you don't do anything heavy uh, then you don't need that much RAM so if you're just testing out like a an OS like a Linux or a Windows 10 for that example you only need probably one gigabyte of RAM or even two gigabytes of RAM and then either a minimum of two CPUs or more. So I am currently working on a Retina MacBook Pro 15 with 16 gigs of RAM and, and uh, quad core uh, i7. So that in itself would be sufficient and big enough although my storage is only 256 gig SSD and that's what makes you decide if you want to put your other VMs on an external a hard drive which you get you enough space the first thing you want to do is on your external hard drive when you first get it uh, the only way for parallels to see that is for you to have a journaled uh, disk so the first thing you want to make sure is you do a disk utility you open that up and you can split it in different ways or partition in different ways and uh, you can have in different uh, formats so my miscellaneous is XFAT uh, it just means that I can uh, plug it into a uh, Mac OS or a Windows OS and it'll be and you'll be able to see it and spot it. These two right here only uh, can be seen on a Mac uh, operating system. So if, if you notice these two, I separate them by Windows VM and the Mac storage and anything miscellaneous that I need to transfer back and forth. So what I created is a partition for Windows VM, or I should have just named it VMs. So in case I need to do Linux or any other distros of the Linux operating system besides Windows, uh, you want to make sure that you journal your uh, that partition into a Mac OS extended uh, journal. Once you do that, it takes like a few, maybe a minute or so. And once you do that, then your Parallels desktop will be able to see uh, that that hard drive for you to install. Uh, once you have Parallels Desktop, uh, you can either click uh, click File here and hit New, and you have a few options. So as you see, you have a if you picked up a Parallels 10, which most people normally do uh, or, or should uh, should do if you're going to be doing any newer VMs, uh, pick one up. Uh, you're kind of required with their licensing ways. Um, love and hate it different opinions with many people so Windows 10 uh, here uh, you get the modern IE with the Spartan you can download the Chrome OS Ubuntu so it kind of gives you an, uh, uh, a little bit of that option so what we're gonna sh actually gonna do is use a Windows 8.1 uh, installation into the external uh, hard drive so uh, another option is to migrate Windows from a PC. So what we're going to do is focus on the install Windows or another OS from a DVD image. So that's another part of uh, another caveat is you have to have an ISO file of Windows 8.1 and I happen to have one uh, located I believe on my Windows VM and I have an ISO file right here which is a Windows 8.1. Uh, there, there's ways to to create an ISO file. Uh, if you have a super drive or some sort of an external DVD drive then you probably want to use that and use a disk. So let's go ahead and move on and, and let's go ahead and highlight that and just gonna hit continue 
um, and it's going to look for an ISO file in your system. It immediately picked up my Windows uh, 881.ISO, but I want to make sure that it's in the right place. You can hover it right here. It says Volume Miscellaneous Windows 8.1 ISO. So let's go ahead and want to highlight that uh, and hit Continue. And it's going to ask you to install the product key if you have it. Uh, well, at this time, I don't have a product key. I'm just going to go ahead and uncheck that box and I'm going to leave the express installation so you get the basic uh, uh, basic settings then you have an option uh, either productivity uh, games only design and software development what we're going to focus on is your daily thing uh, which would be productivity let's going to continue then you have two different options so you can either have it keep as a like Windows 8 style uh, or like Windows 7 but Windows 8 as an operating system what it'll do is install a install start date in a modern mix so when you boot up it goes directly into the desktop uh, and you get the start menu so most people prefer that so at this case we will do that as well and we'll go ahead and continue and in here and you can name your operating system so what what we can do is Windows 8 I'll put one test and uh, you can share with other users of this Mac. Uh, I'm going to leave that unchecked for now. And this is another area of where you're going to put that um, uh, the VM, the disk itself that it's going to create and generate. So it'll tell you what the minimum is on an, uh, Windows 8 it is a 20 gig uh, minimum. And this is where you decide where you're going to put it. It's external. So I'm going to go ahead and check this box. Uh, in this case, it already gave me an option right here, but if you didn't, uh, it would only pull up and save to your local uh, home drive, documents, and parallels. It creates a folder in there, but if you choose a different external, um, let's say this wasn't there, you can choose a folder and you navigate you to yourself that disk that you created, the one that you formatted uh, accordingly to the correct format. In this case, we did one with Windows VM and you can leave it in here or you create you can create a new folder within that and you just name it VMs to kind of you know keep it clean so we you can absolutely absolutely do that and I'm gonna hit choose so it's gonna save it to volumes windows VM and VMs so volumes VM, okay right so either one that would work See, as you can see, the free disk space is 602, which I know that's going to be my external, not my local, because of the big difference in, in storage space. So uh, let's go and do that. And the, it also gives you uh, customized settings before installation. What this will, will do is it'll give you how much memory you want to put, how much um, a CPU you want to put. So we're going to go through that really quick. I'm going to hit continue. Uh, I like it that way so that you can initially set it up there there and then uh, before moving forward so here it is you can name it uh, again you can name the uh, VM itself I'm gonna keep it as that and you can give it a little bit of description um, let's see and you go to your options in here you get your start and shut down menu which is you normally just keep the same optimization I always prefer the faster virtual machine and let's add this to the domain uh, you'll have that issue because of the roaming profile. So uh, for those who are in IT or, or you be working with your machine, you might want to check with your IT uh, or system administrator or your network administrator. This is the one you want to uncheck, shared profile, share Mac user profiles for Windows. I want to uncheck that. Uh, I really don't want to share the cloud because you can get these things, the Dropbox and Google Drive, into your VM. So uh, I like to keep it separately. And smart mount, uh, smart mount, uh, meaning that anything that you've added on here, it'll also show up on your Windows. I uh, usually, again, my preferences, you can dabble with it if you want, uh, but I prefer not to have that. Everything else looks great. Uh, applications, um, I don't want to um, new uh, add new applications to Launchpad. Uh, what that does is it creates these little boxes here, as you can see. Uh, it gets really messy because I know that I don't, I won't be accessing uh, many of them. So just remember uh, about that. So my, maybe I'm checking that. Uh, coherence, uh, leave it as it is. Uh, full screen, use OSX full screen, uh, or you can active. You know, scale to fit. 
screen is also another preference. I actually prefer the keep ratio uh, because Windows doesn't do a very good job, unfortunately doesn't do a very good job in scaling. Uh, it will do the resolution fine, however, you'll have an issue uh, in regards with uh, your text so you're gonna have to get in there and and change from small to medium or to large so typically you'd have to change it to medium to have a good uh, balance of that uh, of, of that uh, scaling so I like to keep the ratio uh, I would want to manage that within uh, the Windows operating system uh, modality I'd keep it in there just basically changing your opaque uh, advanced sync from OS uh, OS X with time uh, you can go directly or do not sync uh, basically you just get through the windows uh, through the internet so everything else looks great in this options and what we're going to do is we're going to do hardware next uh, and here we get your CPU two CPUs would be enough um, unless you have a quad core then you can do a four so because you have a lot more CPUs to kind of uh, 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 give away or take um, in this case we're just going to be practicing um, I'm just going to leave it to two CPUs in RAM, I'm going to say I'm going to give it to, oop, uh, don't change. I don't know why it jumped to that. Uh, let's say I'm going to give 2 gigs of RAM, uh, at least with a minimum. In the second part, boot order, you can change your boot order. Uh, usually I, I leave that off. Uh, memory uh, is kind of maxing out 512. You can do more. Uh, it depends on your graphics interface or graphics card. Uh, at this case, I'm just going to leave 512. I don't need it to be ga doing any gaming, right? Because we chose productivity. Um, all these things I usually keep, print, floppy disk. Uh, floppy disk, oh my god, we can un uh, uncheck that. Uh, CD drive, uh, you default it. Um, hard disk, this is the disk or hard drive that it's going to create. Um, you can double check if you'd like. Um, in edit so you can expand it if you like uh, by default it is set up as expanding disk what that means is that as you continue to build and grow your VM it will expand accordingly so for example if you have more than 64 gigs of information or applications it will exp expand uh, this disk itself uh, I also unchecked where it says split the disk image into two gigs of files uh, I find that there tends to be a little bit of issue down the road, so I uncheck that, and uh, I usually give it a little bit more of storage. In this case, I'm just going to leave it at 64 gig uh, for the purpose of this demo or the purpose of this uh, walkthrough. Network. This also depends on your Intel. Uh, I mean, your 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 uh, networking adapter, network adapter. Uh, usually, I, I leave it as it is. You can do a shared network. You can do host only. Uh, or you can hit bridge, meaning that it will be uh, seen as it's a separate machine. So it would actually have the same uh, IP octets. And so if it's 192.168.1.10, uh, that means your VM would be on that same octet, which is 192.168.1.15, for example. Uh, but if you have it shared, it will be natted, meaning that it's just going to have a way different IP address. It could be a 10.100.11. whatever. So different octet um, if you prefer to share it or abridge it in case you need to have access to certain uh, servers or certain application that requires, uh, that doesn't require or where the security doesn't allow the NAT um, uh, sound is this, uh, I'll keep uh, and, and USB and Bluetooth. I prefer to turn the Bluetooth devices on, uh, especially if you have a uh, Bluetooth mouse, which I do. And I want to make sure that the VM sees that Bluetooth mouse uh, as well. So I check that box and, of course, web cameras and the USB. Okay, from, uh, from the security standpoint, I tend to leave it the way it is unless you really want to isolate your Windows from your Mac, meaning there, there's no fully integration uh, at all. Uh, but that kind of makes it a little bit difficult if you want to work on the coherence portion, uh, which is nice. So it, you don't have an absolutely different uh, nested uh, VM. But if you like to, you can check that box. And uh, I also prefer not to uh, not to use a time machine to back up this virtual machine. Uh, there's other ways to back it up, uh, but I prefer not to do that. Uh, it's really just taking that. PVM, I think it's what it, it's it's named. Um, we can double check here. Uh, 
yeah, PVM. Uh, you, you can just take that and just copy it and, and paste it elsewhere. Uh, but I would not use a, a time machine, otherwise she's going to cause some issues uh, uh, as far as restoration goes. Uh, that's just my um, issues that I've dealt with. Now, after that, you just hit exit here, and your configuration would be verified. Two CPUs, two gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of storage, and I'm just going to hit continue. And what it's going to do is it's going to go through its process and, uh, and, and start installation. And here we go. So now, uh, once you see this window set up, you know that the process is working and it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. All you got to do is really just go through the installation portion, uh, install now, <coughs> excuse me, uh, and, and go through the setup. And that is pretty much it. And if you want to verify that you are, that your system is actually installing in your, um, uh, virtual machine uh, I mean your external hard drive is really just to make sure uh, make, well first make sure you get to that setup screen if you don't uh, that means you're not doing something right it'll typically give you an error um, but if you get that setup screen and you're going through the process you can verify that your PVM uh, is actually installing the right place by opening up the location that you uh, assigned it to for the PVN, PVM. Uh, in this case, we put it on the VMs folder on my Windows VM uh, partition of my external hard drive. In this case, it's right there, which is the 8.1 test.pvm. So that's how you know it's successful, and then so that so that you have enough storage to do so and be much more portable. Now, a good thing about it is that you can take that. Uh, the VM anywhere you go with with your external. If someone else has a uh, as a uh, as a parallel desktop, you can easily mount this and and, and get it installed. And to do that, uh, by going at the beginning, I'm going to go ahead and stop the installation here. And, uh, to go through the installation here, you can hit open uh, and and navigate to your uh, to that to that VM. Uh, you can also make the changes uh, as well if you prefer to, but um, once you have it installed, you can move, technically move that VM uh, wherever you go. And that is it, guys. If you have any questions during the process, uh, leave a comment, and I will do my best to answer uh, your questions as best as possible. Until again, I'll see you next time.